Helen Mirren reigns supreme as Hollywood royalty. And the Oscar goes to Helen Mirren in The Queen. Her acting career spans decades, but what's behind all of those iconic roles she plays? Here's the true story about the triumphs and struggles of Hollywood legend Helen Mirren. Thank you very much indeed. What do you call a four-time Academy Award nominee, one-time Oscar winner, and four-time Emmy winner? You call her Dame Helen Mirren. Please welcome to the stage Dame Helen Mirren. This dame is a force to be reckoned with. She has played the role of queen so many times, it's hard not to see royalty when you look at her. Of course, they had to give her an Oscar for her role in The Queen in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you The Queen. Her roles in the monarchy have made her a Golden Globe magnet. And the Golden Globe goes to Helen Mirren. This queen loves collecting gold statues. She has won four Emmys for her TV roles. Helen Mirren, Elizabeth I. And these are but a few jewels in her crown. Her IMDb page is so full of awards, your hand will get tired from scrolling through them all. I'm incredibly honored, thank you so much. With all of these accolades, it's hard to believe that Helen started out as a middle child of three kids with humble beginnings. Helen was born in London on July 26, 1945. Like many natural performers, Helen is a Leo. Leos love the spotlight, and Helen is no exception. She comes by her love for the arts naturally. Her father is a Russian viola player with the London Philharmonic. Helen's attraction to roles of monarchy likely started with her mother, a Scottish woman with her own interesting ties to the Queen. She came from a long line of butchers. Her grandfather's claim to fame was that he supplied meat to Queen Victoria. Thankfully, the Queen wasn't a vegetarian or Helen would be short a few gold statues. With all of that family history, it's no wonder Helen was drawn to the dramatic arts. Even though her parents forbid it, she couldn't help herself. She knew what she wanted to do with her life from a young age. At 13 years old, Helen became totally obsessed with the theater Theater, particularly Shakespearean theater. To be or not to be, that is the question. Joan of Arc was the first Shakespearean piece responsible for capturing her eye. She loved that St. Joan was portrayed as the Wicked Witch in Shakespeare's Henry VI. When Helen told her parents about her love for theater, they were less than thrilled. Helen says they wanted her to become a teacher instead. Thankfully, she ignored their advice. When she was 18, Helen joined Britain's National Youth Theatre, and a year later she joined the Royal Shakespeare Company. For 15 years, Helen worked with the Royal Shakespeare Company. She played the role of Cleopatra three times, once when she was just 20 years old in 1965, again in 1982, and again in 1998, opposite Alan Rickman before his Harry Potter days. But with all of her budding success in film and theater, she secretly struggled with one major problem. Helen has dealt with major insecurities her whole life. She shared with Woman and Home magazine that she still struggles with self-doubt every day. She admitted that she used to be so terrified of parties that she would have to lock herself in the bathroom to talk herself through her massive anxiety before going out to mingle. So I was kind of, you know, insecure. So I went to a, a psychic. When Helen was 25 years old, she was battling depression. She decided to visit a fortune teller in a strange neighborhood. This fortune teller read her palm and told her that the majority of her success You know, really successful until you're, until you're past 40. That totally took the pressure off. She realized she had no idea what was going to happen, so she might as well just enjoy the ride. Helen says she is much better now than she used to be in dealing with anxiety and self-doubt. Her secret to managing it is to remind herself that she is not the center of the universe, she's part of a whole. She added that it's highly likely that everyone else is probably having their own struggles. People are usually focused on themselves, so there's no need to worry so much about what others think of you. It's nice to see that she doesn't have a huge movie star ego. Dame Mirren is an iconic, glamorous actress, but she hasn't always seen herself that way. She opened up about how she feels when she looks back at some of her photos. She said she will sometimes think to herself that she looks awful, but 99% of the time, Helen thinks that way because she feels she was wearing too much makeup. She finds that as she gets older, she wears less makeup than she used to. Now all she needs for instant glam is some very red lipstick and a pair of sunglasses. Et voilà. C'est parfait. She also shared her own hashtag MeToo struggles as a young female theater actress. She said she had been treated like a piece of meat by men when she was younger and more naive. She wishes she had stood up for herself and says it's the only thing she regrets. She told Vogue magazine that being old is cool, but she really wishes she were 18 again with the strength and courage to tell those men to take a hike. She used stronger language than that, but we'll let you use your imagination. Helen's first film was A Midsummer Night's Dream in 1968, and that was just the beginning for this 
movie star. She went on to become Hollywood's leading lady over the next decade. But her life changed when she played the role of Morgana in King Arthur fantasy drama Excalibur in 1981. Perhaps you ache for what you've never known. It was on this movie set that she met and fell in love with another famous movie star, but we'll get to that in a minute. Helen's first Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress came in 1994 for her role as Queen Charlotte in The Madness of King George. And it certainly would not be the last time she played a queen. In case you weren't keeping track, Helen got her first Oscar nomination when she was 49 years old. This proves that the fortune teller was right. Her career did take off in her 40s. And he was right. He was absolutely right about that. It's amazing. Helen loved being the queen of Hollywood and was in no hurry to settle down. But she did have a love affair with a famous Hollywood hottie. Do you remember when we said Helen met and fell in love with another movie star on the set of Excalibur? Her leading man was Liam Neeson and it was actually more than just a love affair. They lived together for four years. Yeah, we were, we were a, a, a serious item. Liam and Helen were on the Graham Norton show discussing their former romantic relationship almost 30 years after it happened. Helen and I had a love scene. I don't think it's in Excalibur. No, they cut it out. They should put it back in. He said he was completely smitten with her when he saw her wearing her full Morgana costume on the set of Excalibur. He was completely mesmerized by her. A year after Helen and Liam broke up, Helen got together with director Taylor Hackford. He directed and produced a few little films you might have heard of, Ray, Dolores Claiborne, and The Devil's Advocate, starring Keanu Reeves and Al Pacino. But Helen made Taylor wait a very long time to get married, maybe because he had already been married twice before. She told E! Online that she consciously chose her work over her relationships until she met Taylor. I'm Helen Hackford. No, you are. You're Taylor Mirror. Uh, exactly. <laughs> you are sometimes. Even after they met, they dated for over 10 years before they decided to get married. And it wasn't a very romantic story. They just both agreed that it would be smart to get married for legal reasons and because their families wanted them to get married. So they made it official. And we have been together 26 years. But we have only been married about 10. Helen said she had never had anything against marriage, it just wasn't to her taste, like turnips. She added that it took her a very long time to come around to acquiring the taste. I just had to meet the right turnip, she said. Marriage didn't slow Helen down in her career at all. In 2001, she nabbed a second Oscar nomination for Best Supporting Actress for her role in Robert Altman's Gosford Park, where she played an English housekeeper. Two years later, she played the role of a middle-aged woman from Yorkshire who persuades her friends to join her in posing nude for a calendar to raise money for leukemia research. This saucy film was called Calendar Girls. In 2006, Helen won an Academy Award. She was honored as Best Actress for her film The Queen. I want to share my gold star with my fellow nominees, those brilliant, brilliant actresses. Her career continued to skyrocket. Her later roles prove that she can play just about any part. For instance, Helen played Leo Tolstoy's wife, Sophia, in The Last Station in 2009. For that, she received her fourth Oscar nomination. She went from wife to CIA assassin in the 2010 action comedy film Red. In 2010, she went back to her Shakespeare roots in Julie Taymor's film adaptation of The Tempest. Helen played a female female version of the sorcerer, a sorceress named Prospera. And you may remember her as the caring but firm nanny in the 2011 comedy remake Arthur starring Russell Brand. Helen even made her mark in the animation realm with her role as the intimidating headmaster Dean Hardscrabble in Pixar's Monsters University. What kind of a monster are you? Currently, you can find Helen playing the role of another great monarch in the HBO miniseries Catherine the Great. Her new film The Good Liar pairs her with Sir Ian McKellen for a thrilling mystery. This means that two knighted Hollywood legends graced the big screen together. Critics are loving the chemistry between Ian and Helen. With all of those film credits, it's hard to imagine Helen having time for anything else, but she has also enjoyed a flourishing Broadway career. Her Broadway debut was in 1995 when she played the role of Natalia in the play A Month in the country. She returned seven years later to perform in The Dance of Death. Of course, Helen got Tony nominations for both of these roles. She has repeatedly graced the British stage as well. She actually won a Tony for her role in the play The Audience as, you guessed it, another queen. She reprised her role of Queen Elizabeth II and brought her to the stage twice. An unbelievable honor. I'm, I'm so thrilled. Thank you very much. Helen has got to have a pretty big mantle for all of the awards she has won. With all of her accolades and achievements, it's hard to imagine it getting any better for this timeless actress. But in 2003, Helen Mirren was made a Dame Commander of the Order of the British Empire, making her new title Dame Mirren. As if that wasn't enough, Helen is so famous you can find a life-size wax figure of her at Madame Tussauds Wax Museum in Hollywood. 
Even though this award-winning dame commander is in her 70s, she is just getting started. Helen still enjoys her marriage to Taylor Hackford, and the acting roles just keep coming. When asked about her age, Dame Mirren said that the best thing about being over 70 is being over 70. She said you only have two options in life, die young or get old. She's got a point, there's no other way around it. Don't allow other people to make the rules for you. Make your own rules. Helen sees life as fascinating and wonderful and emotional. Most of the world sees Helen the same way. What is your favorite Helen Mirren movie? Tell us in the comments. Thanks for watching and don't forget to like this video and subscribe to The Taco for more.